Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to Crafting with Maggie. This is the first video of a series of videos pertaining to the same thing. We are supposed to be making an altered book. Now I want to talk to you really quickly. Um, Don H. Creates and Unique Wednesday and I are doing a collaboration. Everybody, information in the description box. Last Friday, Don showed you the beginning of her altar book so i started i've already watched the maggie holmes video once right or twice um before today i rewatched it again because i had already created a video uploaded and it was not what she did and i want to kind of keep it in the same sentiment that she was doing in but this is my first altar book and whenever i tear pages out of books i usually try to keep the pages with that book now this book is um called iron orchid i'm not sure if you read the book it has a beautiful cover and um, a lot of just random curse words throughout the book i will be using these pages and that's the one thing that i don't like about tearing or destroying books is you have so many book pages so i'm going to just use these up i'm going to die cut them as best as possible and use them up but what i want to say is the way maggie holmes does it on the video that don shared in her video last week and I'll be linking down in my video for today is not how I did the video. I mean, did the book. I did it the way Brandy would alter her books in general. Um, this book was from the library. Discontinued, you know, when they get ready to get rid of them. So they got rid of it in 2005. Either they received it in 2005. I, let's see if I didn't tear the copyright page out. Oh, tore the copyright page out. So, yep, I don't know. But they got rid of it, right? Needless to say, they got rid of the book. Not saying it's a bad book. I'm quite sure it served people that read it very well. And, um, so yeah, the book is copyright 2005. So they got, got it in 2005. And they probably got rid of it 10 years later something like that 15 i don't i'm not sure i'm not even trying to guess to me how book library people keep their book but anyway you will be seeing this in a, another project is what i'm saying so i went to the lab the garage where a lot of my crap is and my mom's stuff is still there and i dug through a box now i am not sure if this is one of my mom's books or not but it is she was a humongous i think it is she's a humongous stephen king lover she loves his books and a lot of his movies as she got older she said she couldn't watch a lot of the gory and stuff like she was very very much into like vincent price um all of the older black and white horror movies you know all that uh betty what is it betty jane betty jane mommy dearest i think one of those i can't remember um and i hated watching black and white movies is what i call them you know turner movie classics um, i'm not sure if they're still around i don't watch movies that much that don't have little animated figures but um she watched it all the time i was like mom are you watching the black and white she's like yes yeah. so i'm like oh okay so anyway i got this out of a box of books and i'm sure this was her book i think it was and this is how it looks it looks pretty good it is a little bit warped which is okay um and i think you all know how i feel about my mom so i i like to when I have things of hers that I know for sure is hers and not that I got in some de-stash de or garage sale, it makes me feel a lot better about using it. This book has all kinds of junk in it, which is great because that gives me some opportunity to do some creative stuff with it. I'm not sure if this is erasers or what, pencil markings or whatever. So, um, now the thing that I did in the previous book that I will not be doing in this book is tearing the pages out. Maggie Holmes actually uses um, an X-Acto knife. And so we have one, I think this is um, Teresa Collins. Yep. And I got this from Joanne Fabric. So what I'm going to do is I am not going to leave any of these two cover pages, cover page in. Only because, you know, we're using Maggie Holmes stuff. And it's really, her stuff is really not fully there for now. I'll go back and tear it out. But what she show, shares you what to do. This book, just in case you're wanting to know, is well over 300 pages. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, create enough things to go in here. So, but what I do know that I'm going to keep is a few pages in the book like this that I, that I didn't tear out the book. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to um, 
take some now with Stephen King I know that they're curse words in the book so if you see any cursing um, I do apologize this is an adult channel this is not a child channel and I don't like to say that I know a lot of crafters are um, putting that in there um, the stuff that I create you know it's not it's not kid friendly it's not for children although children may see it and like it because it has bold colors and things like that but it's not a child themed anything just so you all know i don't normally say that but i want any of the ladies that may clutch their purses they see you know a curse word or something to know that that is not the intent to offend so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to now i am the worst <laughs> as you probably already know i'm left-handed as you can tell and i am not the best when it comes to cutting things i always cut towards me i've mastered not cutting myself for the most part although i did slice my thumb a few months back and so i did get it down now the thing that i am not going to say that i am going to enjoy is slicing this book up i'm not going to enjoy doing that because i feel like just tearing the pages out would be more sufficient for me but i am going to um try and follow the person that we are crafting with which is maggie holmes i'm following her you know little tutorial that she did and it's on scrapbook.com again that will be in the description box so i cut out some chunkies right here the deeper you put in your blade the chunkier the papers will be now the one thing that she talks about is not ruining your spine now, on the other book that I tore up, I didn't um, mess with the spine at all. And it was a lot easier for me to tear the pages out. But I do want to show you this way, just in case you're interested in doing it. And what you're really doing is you're just tearing off the words so you can go and glue the pages in there. I'm Now I'm going to, um, oh, she cut it deep. <laughs> you know, when people say, oh, that hurt deep. Yeah, I cut it deep. All right, so we're just going to tear this up right here i hope you all are doing okay um you're staying home you're not in the streets too much shopping buying craft stuff that you don't need um but if you are you know um be safe i'm not sure which craft stores are still open to the public that you can go in and buy stuff so i'm gonna um for now i'm going to turn every five pages or so and um cut now, why I'm doing that is because I think what I'm going to do is take these pages, right? These five or so pages, and I'm going to just make them one page. So I think what I'll do is like glue them together, even though it's five pages. Um, and then I may just put like, um, for example, not that I'm going to do that, but for example, I would put this on the page by itself, right? Just as an example. Or maybe I have another image, like I have these flowers that are definitely not going in this book, but you know something like that and i would color the background with just some regular maybe acrylic um paint or something like that so this is going to be definitely a challenge challenge for me um because i'm not i've only altered one book and i never finished it because i was like oh i need to gesso this and gesso that and i just never got around to actually finishing that project so this spine is super sturdy which is really good um, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to go down as deep as I did um, earlier. Now, I do not mind that I have to do this because the lines are going to be a lot more stable. But tearing the book up, I think, will have done, serve the purpose just as well. All right, but I am, I am going by the go-by. <laughs> the person that created it. I'm not sure she actually created it. I'm sure somebody else was like, hey, let me alter this book. When I um, moved to San Antonio in 2012, I had joined a group called Stitch and Bitch, where you stitch, crochet, or knit. And, you know, bitch usually means that you're complaining, kind of, or whatever. So, we're going to keep, we're going to tear a few more pages right here. Um, but this one lady, she had came in with a, a, a altar journal. And then I was just buying paper. I wasn't really crafting on the paper. And now I wish that I um, still was in contact with her because she could have been like my teacher. You know, she could have been the all-knowing. She probably has videos, maybe. She was an older lady, but not old enough to not know how to use a phone or a camera or, you know, things like that. She wasn't like old, old, like a hundred. 
but even hundred yo's probably still make can make a YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, now we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five. So you know, I let's go back to Brandy said old. Um, I consider myself old, and I'm 42. So if you're older than I am, please don't be offended. And if you're younger than I am and you feel old, I feel you. Um, I have a lot of um, muscle issues, bone problems. So sometimes when I get ready to stand up, I can't <laughs> right away. So that's why I always say that I'm old versus um, a spring chicken, if that makes any sense. I'm not the spryest person. I've been having pain lately. But I've been refusing to go to the doctor, especially right now. I don't want to go to the hospital and waste their time looking at something that's always going to be there for me when they need to focus on getting other people better. This book is, the spine is so thick. Um, and you see how I'm tearing that page, which is okay, I guess. No big deal. And that's why I was saying the other book, I think, would have been suffice. But I've already deleted the video. So we're going to do it the way, you know, she recommends it. So what I've been doing to try not to be in a lot of pain is limit some of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm doing, which, you know, I'm not picking up anything heavy besides my um, sack of potato sun. And um, I'm just trying to drink more water, stay hydrated as best as possible. Um... You know, and things like that. But I, I always tell you all that I have chronic low back pain. I have chronic pain anyway. So, I'm, you know, I'm always kind of achy and sore. But my right leg, my ankle area has been hurting. So, um, I'm just trying to figure out what I can do. Um, you know, besides soak it in, in some water and some Epsom salt and things like that. Um, and yesterday we went for a little walk to the mailbox. I rarely, um, normally on the way home from being in the streets, we'll stop at the mailbox. But since we haven't been out lately, I haven't been going to the mailbox. So, you know, we just walked there. It was so crazy um, <laughs> that we walked there. And the sun, you know, the sun was out, but it wasn't shining. I'm not sure how you feel about the sun. You know, it's very good to get some um, sun in your life. But if it's hot, it usually drains the crap out of me. And I was like out of it by 8 o'clock. I was so sleepy and tired. But I was trying to wait to see um, if my aunt made it home safely from work before I went to bed. And we ended up talking for like 30, 40 minutes. Before I was like, okay, I'm, I'm tapping out one, two, three, four, five. All right, so this is how it's looking so far, and I think that's gonna be good. So every um, tour section will be a Maggie Holmes something, and even on these, you know, we'll put that. And the thing is. I'm not going to cover up all of the titles, but I am going to like just take, for example, and I'll probably do that first before I actually do anything in here, is color it because whoever receives this, um, you know, um, it's like they're getting a piece of me with my mommy. You know, I did another book of hers that I gifted to someone and it just makes me feel good to do that. So, um you know, we'll see at the end. At the end, I may fall in love with it and want to keep it for myself. So we'll see how that works out, which I doubt. I will want to keep it, although that nautical book and even a little flip book that I did, um, the carnival one, I was looking at it, you know, this morning. I was just like, oh, this is so cute. I think I just like it because of all the other things that I put in and did to it. Like I, I was outside of my comfort zone and usually when I'm outside of my comfort zone I create better if that makes any sense to you I didn't put a string right here why didn't she put a string because she did one right here right a few strings anyway um I, I I find that when I'm pushed out of my comfort zone I tend to create a little bit better because I'm like okay what you know how are you going to top your normal regular shape cards or whatever 
so that's why I do enjoy doing like random challenges or you know because it makes me think outside of my own little crafty box but I have a lot of ideas that I haven't just put into play yet because I like to um, actually you know research things before I get on here and make a bumbling crazy fool of myself but sometimes that that's going to be in, be inevitable now um i'm not sure if you all are a stephen king fan or not but um it's been a long time now that what i'm talking i think this is from that series actually or did he change his name and he did a pseudo pseudo name anyway um you know stephen king got ran over or hit by a truck driver and he survived it and um he made a book he wrote a book about it and he actually did a movie and so my mom would always talk about that and she's like oh yeah you can tell his stuff changed after that if i got ran over by a truck or hit by a truck or a car or somebody on a bicycle i think my mentality would change too but you know she was like oh you know he had to write a book about it so i think in the book or the movie i'm not sure what the name of it is i am not like i like stephen king but i don't um get into a lot of things like i've read misery which is an amazing book oh a great book the movie was good and i think i watched the movie first and then i read the book and i was just like oh they did not do this book justice because it's such a good book um four five um and you know i i consider myself to be a nerd i'm not as nerdy as i once was but i am definitely a nerd when it comes to like certain things so you know if my mom were here or whatever um you know we probably have a lot of books well she still has a lot of her all her belongings are here of course but like her books and stuff i um would always just we went to this place in connecticut called the, i think it's called the book barn or the red barn it's a bookstore but it's a lot of barns right a whole lot of barns and they're like used books some of them are new books um but you go there and you know I, I i can't remember the setup how it was but each barn has you know like mystery kids each section has their own little thing now the problem with books any book besides like if you get it from the dollar store books cost money <laughs> so even if you know if i give you a stack of books for i give you 300 books and you give me a hundred dollars especially like where i live we have something called um half price bookstore you know they'll if it's a good book they'll sell it for a higher price than what they sell it to you for that's just how the economy works unfortunately so um here we are so far now the book that Maggie Holmes shows you, she cuts all the pages out. I'm not going to do that, as I stated before. Now, I may go back in later on, and um, depending on how many sections I want to have, I may come back in and just, you know, chop off um, a few. Once we finish this, we'll be able to tell, because um, I don't want to have, like, too much. Like, this could be a journaling page, so I'm not making that photo album. I'm making a, a true altered book. Her book her altar book was photo album or album in general so i'll be adding pages from her collection in here as well as you know dropping in some um, pocket life cards and folding a few pages over and things like that what i'm going to do i haven't decided yet but i know that uh, we're going to finish destroying the book first okay before we get into any of that and right here we're keeping all the white portion um, because that's how we're going to glue our creations in i don't have any creations to go in the book yet so i don't feel like i'm behind because we have four weeks to work on this so yeah <laughs> and you know a lot of times you can do behind the scenes work before you share your projects and with this collab, I've, or all the collabs, I try to um, limit the amount of time that I take up with, take up from you, um, versus say, hey, look, I'm making an hour long video and I want you to watch it as part of the collaboration. I just don't think that that would be 
very uh good to do for me i do like watching long videos so if you know someone posts a long video i'm, I'm all there i just can't watch 20 long videos in one day that's um not how my life is set up right now so or ever ever i don't have uh time to just watch videos like that so i cut this real deep look at that that's super chunky deep which is okay so now i'm just going to lift this up and cut this so this video is probably really boring to you all um because this is just going to be us chatting and me cutting up and tearing pages for the most part like i don't like how this piece looks right here so i'm just going to pull it up and then we'll do five Now, I do think that I've reached my limit of how many sections I want to have. So, in between each section is a Maggie Home section, right? So, so, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we'll have 10, 10 to 12 pages. I did not do the math and divide and think about all that stuff. I just, you know, got got a book. Even though this book is exactly like the Stuart Woods Iron Orchid book, like the whole process, except for I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut the pages. So could I have kept the other one? Yes, but I want, you know, I already said I want to try to stay true to form. So I'll stop saying that. That's driving me crazy. Okay. Now, of course, we can go back in and make the pages a little bit more thick or wider. Because I have those five pages. So I can always go back and... Um, I don't know what's wrong with this page. It just does not want to act right. But I can always go back in and um, tear off some more pages if I need to. You know, cut off some pages. Come on, book. I'm not that great with an exacto knife, if you didn't notice that already. But, I mean, I don't think it's that hard to use. So, if you're nervous about using one, don't be. You could use, well, I wouldn't recommend that for these kind of projects. But, you know, if you have a box cutter, you don't have to go out and buy an exacto knife if you don't have one. If you're going to be crafting along with us. I'm not even sure if the ladies are going to show you their book prep or not. Um, Don has already made one, which looks so cute. You know, I'm not a big Peacock fan, but that Peacock on the front of her project looks really, really pretty. And I'm trying not to go down too hard because I don't want to tear another line, which I, I did. So let's see. So I'm trying to go right here on that the first letter of the page. And I'm just pressing down. I'm hoping to get like seven to ten pages sliced <laughs> at the very beginning. So I don't have to go back and um you know work on it any like I'm doing now. But you know, I was thinking that you, the only reason why, well, let me tell you what I was thinking first. I was thinking that if you had like a phone book or something, you could actually use a phone book. So if you don't want to tear up your, your book, a book that you purchased, you may have a, some of you probably like phone books. Maybe. Yes, people still own phone books. I have one in my possession. Um, one day I went outside, not in time recent, a couple of years ago, like seven years ago. And they had phone books on my front porch. I was like, who in the world still uses phone books? A lot of people still use phone books. Um, so it's something to think about. If you want to alter a book and you're nervous about it, you can do that. Or if you've taken your son or daughter to uh, Chick-fil-A, they give out little books. You can destroy one of those. 
before you get really into destroying a book or you know if you went to a thrift store go in there and just grab a book from that the um a thrift store and you can do that because what I, I don't think what we don't understand about thrift stores is that they'll take they'll sell them until they can't sell the stuff anymore and then sometimes they ship them overseas in like big containers and um, so if you've ever been like watching a documentary and you see a a person with like a, a shirt on that says something offensive that's how they've gotten those clothes um which you know i've read um comments before like if they lowered the prices in the thrift stores maybe some of the stuff would move off a lot better quicker faster but you know at the same time i'm not opposed to helping out people that need to be helped out um some people recycle clothes um you know they take t-shirts and cut them down and create other things from that so it just depends on what you do some people well now i think unfortunately the thrift stores have turned into like something that little youth people i almost say kids but like youth go to because it's like a place to buy clothes just because like the thrift store is no longer like a for people that actually need the thrift store like when i was growing up that's where i got a lot of my um clothes from now the thrift store is kind of like a boutique if you um, think of it like that a lot of people consider it like a boutique <laughs> when it's definitely you know the original intent was not for that um it's so interesting i remember i read a book about this girl they were poor and um they got she had got her dress from the thrift store and it had a big stain on it and one of the rich girls was like oh i have a i like your dress i bet it has this stain on it because that used to be my dress you know she was trying to embarrass her or whatever and i remember thinking when i was growing up we um i had to participate in the, in the event and i had a white dress long sleeve it had like it was really pretty like lace all over it on the collar on the neck and i hate turtlenecks that always made me feel like i was being choked um it was long sleeve and i wore it to whatever that function was and then for halloween i wore it and i was a zombie bride i had saw that on mtv i think or one of those channels probably mtv uh, four five so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to leave all of these great not uses usage pages um just the plain white pages there arthur's notes is this another white page no so what i'm going to do i'm going to go one two three four five i'm just going to turn this on its back and slice it right here but anyway um i wore the same dress again and one of the girls who had money of course people that don't have money normally don't talk about other people that don't have money it's usually the rich people or people that are well off that can um notice that you have on something that you wore again i don't know why it's, it's like that like you have to notice that i'm poor great good good job um she was like you wore that for the thing i was like yeah <laughs> not everybody can afford stuff like that and you know i, I don't know if little kids you know we were in elementary school i think we were in the fourth grade so i don't know if notice i don't know if children notice that they're jerks when they're jerks or not um so that is all for this book i have destroyed it and now we're gonna count it to see if i don't want to open up some more Okay, so we have 11 pages that we need to make. Well, actually 22. And then we have 44 pages that we need to cover up. So this is 11 sections front and back. Now, what I did go ahead and do is I tore out the front page. I left this on here. So these will be blank. I won't do anything to those just yet. I may have a library card I can print out. I'm not sure. And then the back page right here. These pages will be all blank, right? right here and then this will be covered up so i want to say thank you all for watching i hope that you've enjoyed our little book destruction chatty chat until next time happy crafting